Good morning, everybody. It's time for virtual story time at BPL. We're here every Monday at 11 o'clock on our BPL Facebook Live. I am Miss Laura, and we will start with our hello song. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? How are you today? Happy fall break for those of you who are out of school. Happy upcoming Thanksgiving. I've got a couple of um, Thanksgiving-ish stories for you today. We're going to start with this one by Chris Rashka called The Blue Table. So on Thanksgiving, we think about all the things that we are thankful for. And a lot of us get together with our family or our friends and have a big feast. This one is called The Blue Table. The back of the book says, welcome, come in, join the celebration around the blue table. A child, a parent, milk for the child, coffee for the parent, and another parent. After breakfast, they get going. Good things from the garden. What do you see there from the garden? Carrots, potatoes, good things from the store and the farm. See anything there you think is yummy? Apples in a pie. and flowers. Looks like they're putting an extra piece into the table so it'll be bigger. Look at that. And one more family all come together. For a Thanksgiving feast. Thankful. So yummy. All around. The blue table. The end. All right. Let's sing our ABCs, shall we? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Do you see my eyes going everywhere? I'm very distracted. Do you see all the kids behind me hanging out at the library? Well, they're here because school is out and also because we have a drop-in scavenger hunt going on. Today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, we're open until 9 today and tomorrow and 5.30 on Wednesday. You can drop in any time and pick up a turkey hunt clues sheet from the Youth Services Desk. Find all the turkeys and get a prize. Pretty nifty, huh? All right. One thing I like to eat is squash. 
I don't know if you like squash. I didn't really like it until I was a grown up, honestly. Do you know about the vegetables that are squash? Pumpkins are actually a type of squash, I think. This is a story by Pat Miller and Ann Wilsdorf called Sophie's Squash. There she is. See, it kind of looks like a skinny little pumpkin. Sophie's Squash. Doesn't look like she's eating it though, does it? <clears throat> One bright fall day, Sophie chose a squash at the farmer's market. Her parents planned to serve it for supper, but Sophie had other ideas. It was just the right size to hold in her arms, just the right size to bounce on her knee, just the right size to love. I'm so glad we met, Sophie whispered. Good friends are hard to find. At home, Sophie used markers to give her squash a face. Then she wrapped it in a blanket and rocked it to sleep. When it was time to make supper, Sophie's mother looked at the squash. She looked at Sophie. I call her Bernice, Sophie said. I'll call for a pizza, said her mother. After that, Bernice went everywhere with Sophie, to story time at the library, to visit other squash at the farmer's market to practice somersaults by the garden. Every night, Sophie gave Bernice a bottle, a hug, and a kiss. Well, we did hope that she would love vegetables, Sophie's mother told her father. I did that in a dad voice because I thought the dad said it. Well, we did hope she'd love vegetables, Sophie's mother said to her father. Shh, said Sophie, Bernice is sleeping. Sweet pea, Sophie's mother said one morning as they made blueberry waffles. Bernice is a squash, not a friend. If we don't eat her soon, she'll get mushy and gross. Let's bake her with marshmallows. Won't that taste yummy? Don't listen to her, Bernice, Sophie cried. That afternoon, Sophie's father took her shopping. Sugar beet, he said. Bernice is a squash. Why don't you pick a nice toy to play with instead? But the trucks were too hard and the dolls were too soft. Sophie clutched Bernice tightly. No thanks, she said. I have everything I need. After supper, Sophie's parents called a family meeting. Bernice napped in Sophie's lap. Why don't we donate Bernice to the food pantry before she rots, her father suggested. Sophie shook her head. Bernice will last forever. Bernice seems a little blotchy today, said Sophie's dad on the way to the library. She looks perfect to me, Sophie replied. At story time, the kids pointed and stared. What's that spotty thing? A boy asked. Her name is Bernice and she's a squash, said Sophie, with freckles. Maybe Bernice should stay home next time, Sophie's mom suggested. Why, Sophie asked. She wasn't the one being rude. <clears throat> Still, as winter neared, Sophie noticed changes. Bernice seemed softer and her somersaults lacked their usual style. Visiting friends will cheer you up, Sophie said. So they went to the farmer's market. There, squash were everywhere. Firm, shiny squash. What keeps a squash healthy? Sophie asked a farmer. It's simple, really, he said. Fresh air, good clean dirt, and a little love. Well, Sophie thought, I have all that. At home, Sophie cleared leaves from Bernice's favorite spot. She made a bed of soft soil, tucked Bernice in, and kissed her goodnight. Get better soon, she whispered. That night while Sophie slept, the wind whistled 
and tiny snowflakes flew. When she awoke, the world was covered in white. Do you think Bernice is cold out there? Sophie asked her mother. I'm sure she's warm and cozy under her snow blanket, her mother replied. Sophie gazed out the window all morning. She was still there in the afternoon when her father came home with a surprise. You need a new friend, he said. Meet Ace, the goldfish. Ace was nice, but boring. He just swam around and around in his bowl. But during the long winter, Sophie discovered that Ace was a superb silent reader who did fabulous flip turns, and he always listened politely when she talked about Bernice. Bernice was great at keeping secrets, she told Ace. When the snow finally melted, Sophie rushed to the garden. The only thing there was a small green sprout. It looked strangely familiar. Bernice, Sophie said, how was your winter? After that, Sophie, Ace, and Bernice ate lunch together every day. One bright summer morning, Sophie somersaulted across her yard, landed by the garden, and stared in disbelief. Bernice had grown two tiny squash. Wow, Sophie told them, you look just like your mom. Soon, Bonnie and Baxter were just the right size for Sophie to hold on her arms, in her arms, and bounce on her knee. Just the right size to love. tell a story about my son, which would probably embarrass him because he's almost 13 now. When he was little bitty, he picked up an apricot in the store and said it was his baby. I have a picture of him cuddling it. What do we want to sing now? Hmm. I know it. Well, it's kind of a Thanksgiving song. Do you know Over the River and Through the Woods? I will sing it. If you know it, sing it with me. If you don't, you can always rewind and sing it after you learn it. Over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. The horse knows the way to carry the sleigh through the white and drifting snow. Over the river and through the woods, oh, how the wind does blow. It stings the toes and bites the nose as over the ground we go. Ho! What you think? All right. This book is fun. It's kind of a rhyming word game. I'll need you to help me with it. It's by Francis McCall and Patricia Keeler. A huge hog is what that rhymes. A huge hog is a big pig, right? That's how this works. Let's see what, what we find. Here it is again. A huge hog is a big pig. A swamp croaker is a bog frog. A swamp is also called a bog and a croaker is a frog. A chatty parrot is a warty birdie. A wet hound, wet hound, is a soggy doggy. A chubby kitty, this one's kind of easy. A chubby kitty is a fat cat. A silly rabbit, what rhymes for silly rabbit? Funny bunny. A chicken coop is a hen den. A grandmother goat is a granny nanny. Cattle food is cow chow. 
A runaway gander is a loose goose. A cozy beetle is a snug bug. And here's our Thanksgiving bird, a fidgety gobbler. Fidgety gobbler is a jerky turkey. A duck flock is a quack pack. A puppy kiss. A puppy kiss is a pooch smooch. And a happy father is a glad dad. I think that's fun. I like word stuff like that. All right. Let's sing one more song before we go. We are going to sing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. <clears throat> Let's start over. That sounded horrible, Miss Laura. Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, how I wonder what you are. We will be having story time in person on Wednesday at 10 o'clock and then 11 o'clock. We close at 530 on Wednesday. We close Thursday and Friday and we will open back up Saturday at 9. Happy, happy, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. <laughs>